G'day. Sunday's Brazilian Grand Prix was an amazing race. Lando Norris securing second position from an almost unbeatable Max Verstappen, but perhaps more so, the story was Fernando Alonso and Sergio Perez battling it out right till the very end. That was definitely worth the price of admission, and I'll go into more details about that, plus the incredible security that surrounds this race. So stay with me now, I'll be back in eight seconds time. This was a sprint race weekend, so qualifying was done on Friday and the race on Sunday. I actually went up and shot the start of the race from the inside of turn one. This is one of the most exhilarating and exciting places to photograph Formula One. First up, not everyone can shoot from that spot. You need one of these. This is a pit wall tabard. It's different to the normal tabard, and I only get this a few times a year, but this race is an absolute essential. As you can see, there were only a handful of us there, and we're quite close to the action as they round turn one. So for the first race start, it was full bore towards us, and I didn't realize at the time that there was an accident on the outside of the track with Alex Albon and Kevin Magnussen coming together. All I could see was some smoke, but looking back at the images, you can see one of the cars up the top of this image here. At the time, I didn't realize that there was a tire that had come off one of those cars and actually wrecked Daniel Ricciardo's rear wing and then went bounding downhill. Of course, that meant the race was stopped and for a goodly long time while they repaired this barrier. But normally, if I was at, say, the outside of turn one, there'd be very little for me to shoot. But being based on the inside on pit wall, there was everything to shoot. All of the cars coming in, stopping some of the drivers like Lando Norris stayed in the car for a goodly long time while others got out very quickly. I think this might have been the first time too that I was on pit wall when we had a race stop. So you have this tremendous flurry of activity down there and it's almost like drinking from a fire hose in terms of what do you shoot. But eventually they did leave pit lane, formed up for a full restart and once again they came barreling down towards us at turn one and plenty of lockups. I shot from that corner for about, I think, a dozen laps and then went and covered as many pit stops as I could. And it's a fascinating sight to see them from pit wall come in and leave those pit boxes. Let's jump to the end of the race that I came back and waited on top of the photographic tower, which is right opposite the podium. And there I picked up a whole lot of action of cars coming around that corner. And the crowd on the outside of the track at that last corner is incredibly vocal. And earlier in the week, I noticed out on track that every time Lewis came around, he got a huge roar. He was very much the crowd favorite. Not that Fernando Alonso and Sergio Perez weren't too far behind him in popularity. Now what I was thrilled about was being ready to take this shot with Fernando and Sergio battling it out as they came to the line. And as you probably realize by now, it was I think 0.053 of a second, the margin between Fernando and Sergio Perez. I must say I was quite fortunate I think to get this picture from where I was standing. It happens to be pretty much perfect. The lighting is amazing. It captures the cars just after they cross the line and you can see that Sergio is looking across at Fernando. And I can tell you that Fernando Alonso will be signing 50 copies of this print very shortly and hand numbering them. So uh, if you're a Fernando fan and you'd love to see this picture in your home or office, click on the link in the description and hopefully your favorite number is still available. And I couldn't have been happier that Fernando snared that third place position because he's such a passionate podium prize getter. He pretty much mimicked an earlier podium this year where he jumps off that podium down onto the main deck and then he focused all of his attention towards his team who were waiting below. And yes, he dropped his champagne bottle to them again. And yeah, I know it's not champagne. I thought this podium was probably the best of the year. Why? These people. And these, and these, and these, and these, and these, and these. It was just absolutely amazing. They go crazy down below. Although I was talking to Ted Kravitz about uh, 20 minutes after the end of the podium and he said, look, the FIA actually asked the organizer to tell them why people were allowed to invade the track early. I didn't see where that happened. Maybe you know more about that. But they certainly invaded it and they stayed for a very long time. I thought I might as well stay out there because you never know who might appear. Well, some of the Aston Martin crew came out with one of the big Ferrari bottles of bubbly and entertained the crowd out there for a little bit. Then Felipe Dragovic arrived. Well, he lapped up all the love that the crowd had for him. I got this lovely shot and thankfully he turned my way because for a moment there I thought he wouldn't. And I had a hunch that Lewis Hamilton might also do the same. And I can tell you that my patience was rewarded because sure enough, Lewis came out and yes, he did get up on the fence. And yes, 
the crowd went crazy. And then he moved down, I'm guessing 200 metres, and jumped up on the fence again. And then he continued to walk down to turn one. I'm thinking, there's no wire fence down there. Fans could easily jump that. Where's he going? Well, I can tell you exactly where he was going. And I didn't realise this at the time. He was going to the ambulance and he jumped in it. And then Logan Sargent appeared and also jumped in the ambulance. What was going on? Well, they were going to be drug tested. It can happen at any time and at any place. And those two were chosen for that time and place. After that, I hung around and waited for the drivers to come out of the press conference and they go on for an inordinate length of time. When Lando came out, I followed him back to the hospitality suite and then he went inside, dropped something off and then he came out and I said, where are you going? And he said, Sally, celebration shot out in the pit lane. So I went out there and covered that and I had to laugh because he had his back to the crowd doing some social media stuff and he'd turn his head like that and they'd go crazy and he'd bring his head back and smile then he'd do it again and he took great mirth in that but eventually he did pop out and see them and instead of just climbing up onto the concrete like Lewis and Felipe did he climbed to the very top of the wire took a couple of selfie shots my shots weren't that great eventually jumped down and uh, then it was back for a bit more social media and left the track I gather I loved the whole post-race celebration for me they were the very best fans I'd seen anywhere. Excited but not angry, loud, orderly but well behaved and really enjoyed the whole post-race experience. And this person souvenired one of those DRS foam boards. Oh, and I should say that Mariana Becker, who is an absolute legend in this part of the world, showed me these great pics, which she put up on her Instagram page, of Sergio congratulating Fernando Alonso at the TV media pen after the race. Now, onto the subject of security. It was enormous here. I stayed at the Palazzo Tangara Hotel, and I can tell you most of the drivers seem to be staying here too. One morning when I was leaving, Sunday morning actually, there was 15 to 20 motorcycle police arriving, setting up camp, ready to provide escorts for the drivers to the track. It's about a 25 minute drive in reasonable traffic. And all of the drivers were in SUVs with dark windows. The Jeep Commander was one of the most popular cars. And did any of the drivers drive? No, they all had drivers in the car. And that's why I'm not doing a driver's drove video this week. But on top of that, the car windows are heavily tinted. The drivers sit in the back and they have a security guard that rides up front. Now that security guard will actually walk to the swipe gates at the track with the drivers and get them into the paddock. Some of them actually walked inside and accompanied drivers around. Now Lewis had four of his own security people plus the locals provided. And most of these security guys are, I believe, ex-military or certainly have police or uh, armed combat training not to be messed with. And you can see here on the left and right of Lando Norris, he has two security guards walking him back from the press conference down the paddock to the McLaren hospitality suite. Now, some of the fans on my Instagram page went absolutely burko over me explaining how security works in Brazil and to a lesser extent, Mexico. So how does this all come about? Well, the FIA provides advice to the teams. The teams do their own homework and they take on board that advice and they all, to a man, decide that they need to protect their people because they have a duty of care. And whether Brazilians like it or not, this is a dangerous city and it has proved to be dangerous in the past. Not all the time, but of course we did have that incident with the Mercedes group being held up at gunpoint going back years ago now. So as I understand it, the teams advise all of their crew that they're not to be seen in team kit outside the track. And the cars they travel in have no team branding. Plus, this and Mexico are the only two races where when we get a parking pass, we don't stick it on the car for the four days of the event. We only show it as we go in. We're actually told not to have that pass visible anywhere but coming into the track. And yes, that is why a lot of the drivers come in in casual clothes. It's been the same for a number of years now. And for me, and probably for you looking at my Instagram page, it's a lovely thing not to see F1 logos plastered all over the clothing. And a couple of you said, well, what about Carlos? He was in his team kit, yeah. Well, I can tell you right now, he would have had a jacket over him in the car, or it would have been impossible for people outside the car to see in. When I came back to the hotel on Thursday night, there would have been probably 100 people waiting out the front of the hotel. And now I'm guessing 18 to 24 year old female was hoping to see a driver. All of the cars that came in had their number plates covered with some cardboard. 
and they had a police escort. And on Friday night, were there many people there? No, because the weather was atrocious. I think there was five or six people that night. But on Saturday, when I drove in, there was a huge row of police cars and SUVs waiting to get out. Now, as much as some people don't like hearing about all the security that is put in place by these teams, I think it's with us for some time yet. Let's go now to the rain on Saturday, and it was absolutely amazing. Did I get soaked? Thankfully not. I was out at turn four, and I covered Q1 and Q2 from there. And then I walked back because I wanted to get shots of the drivers getting out of the car in Park Fermi. So I was standing undercover in a corridor, thankfully, but I could see in front of me, out into pit lane and behind me, out to about turn six, I think it was. Yeah, it was coming down, and the wind was strong. There were a number of uh, downed trees on the way back to the city that night, plus out at the track, uh, one of the grandstands at least lost their roof. Did someone ask what my biggest post of the weekend was? No? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Anyway, it was this post of Charles Leclerc, an Oculus picture of him in a long sleeve sweater, Nami has to be exact. But there were so many comments about his girlfriend, Alexandra. And quite frankly, there's some very judgmental comments on there from people who I imagine have never met the woman. Daniel Ricciardo, does he get much social media hate? No. Hardly any at all. He's pretty much a likeable guy. And on one of the mornings, I was photographing him arriving, walking with him, and some guy in the paddock shouts out, you're very handsome, which had both me and Daniel laughing. And what about his shoelaces? A different color on each foot. Unusual? No. And on a fashion front, let's talk about Lewis's four outfits over the weekend. This was my favorite. A uh, tribute to Ayrton Senna, Pierre Gasly, well, he had a Brazil football shirt on. Marta de Silva, the Lionel Messi of women's football, was a guest of Esteban. She looked pretty snazzy in this black outfit. We had a couple of other local footballers there too. Lando and Pierre Gasly wore Palmeiras shirts, which is a local team. Apologies if I've pronounced that wrongly. If you're a Brazilian, you might know Ludmilla. She was there with her wife and they were walking backwards and forwards down the paddock for all the media to photograph, so thank you to them for making it easy. Uh, and then out on the grid, we had Machine Gun Kelly. My gosh, he uh, had a fair amount of detail involved in his outfit. Next up, I'm off to Las Vegas, and after the popularity of my last video looking at the setup for the race, I'm going out to have another meeting with the organizer and show you what the progress is, and that'll be up at the end of this week if you're watching this upon release. Obrigado, Brazil, for looking after me on my trip here and for giving me so many great memories on race day at the 2023 Brazilian GP. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe if you haven't done so. Content and merchandise, yep, plenty of options for you right here. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. Got the same bloody thing for everything. What a f idiot.